Praise the Lord, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone here to the uh, New Life Experience Church here in the city of Savannah, where our pastor and founder is uh, District Elder John Anderson, along with uh, Sister Sally Anderson. We are here this morning in substitute for uh, evangelist uh, Jackie Scott, and I believe she'll be here next week. If not, you will see uh, Elder Kindred here. But uh, we will uh, be continuing with our Sunday school lesson, and we're going to continue with uh, the uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World Sunday School commentary, <coughs> excuse me, commentary. And we are at, uh, I believe this is lesson uh, three for this quarter. And it's still dealing in the book of Romans. And the title of this uh, pass uh, lesson of this part of the Sunday School is Freedom for the Future. Freedom for the Future. Uh, if you're listening to me, uh, you here in the audience, uh, you can just uh, think about that for a minute. And if you're driving in your car, we still have time for you to come on down here. We are live in Sunday school this morning. We are live here in Sunday school. Freedom for the future. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of uh, studying your word. We thank you for the individuals that you have given to us to teach your word. God, we ask that you bless their ears right now, God, that they be able to understand your word and get a deeper knowledge and a deeper understanding of it. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And again, like I said, it's coming from Romans, the 8th chapter, uh, verses 18 through um, uh, 23. But the uh, commentary do gives a golden text, a uh, golden scripture. Uh, they call it golden text. Uh, it said, uh, that's verse 18, uh, the same passage, what I just said. It said, for I reckon that the suffering of this present times are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. And that's Roman uh, 8 and 18. We're, we're going to get to that verse, but they want you to look at us that we are suffering. We are going through something right now. We are talking about the future. This is freedom for the future. Uh, in the last two subjects, we have been talking about freedom. One of them was in your present state, and the other freedom is the freedom we have uh, right now. And now we are talking about freedom, freedom for the future. The future. What's going to happen in the future? This is not an eschatology me uh, message, a uh, Sunday school lesson. It is in a little bit of sense, but it's not one in a deeper broad when you go into the Daniels and the uh, Revelations and stuff. It's just a little bit Paul was um, getting uh, to the church at Rome. A background about this here again, if I'm going too fast, I'll put something in the com commentary. I'm sure they'll give it to me, uh, 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 the superintendent of uh, the, uh, uh, the Sunday school teacher will be here. But I gave you about the background. This is around uh, 56 AD. We was talking about the city of Rome. Uh, the, in the city of Rome, in the continent, uh, country of Italy, uh, Rome was uh, the uh, count uh, was the major center of the whole world at this time. And we had the emperor Nero. Nero was one of the worst emperors that they had, uh, Caesar, uh, however you want to call it at that time. He was the one that prosecuted the church. He was the one that set the city of Rome on fire. Yeah, I said it now. If you want to talk to me now on a history point, we, uh, we send your notes in and we'll discuss it. He set it on fire and he blamed the Christians. That's it. All evidence shows up to that. And this was coming up before this time. It was almost 56 years after Christ had left. And remember, we're in the city of Rome, and they don't have the Bible, what we have now. They don't have the 66 book, what we call the Bible right now. Basically, if they have anything, they have the Torah, the first five books. If you're looking at it in the Greek, they have the uh, Pentateuch, the first five books in the Bible. That's what they have. But um, they was waiting on a message from Paul, and it took about a year for Paul to get this letter to you know, you have a present need, you send a, a message out, would take a couple of days running by message. They didn't have the mailman, and it got to Paul, and Paul sent a letter before he was coming. And this letter was gold, and they was going to this, going over it. And remember, it was an argument going on there. So when you hear me say some things, and you put the comments in, we will direct them, we will address them. But um, 
you know, and there was an argument going on with the Romans, the Greeks, and the uh, Jewish Christians right there. It was three facets, facets going out. If you're a pastor, you know what I'm trying to say when you got three different cliques going on in one church. That's what Paul had to deal with with a letter what took probably a year to get there. But we, uh, we've said all of this the last two times before. And we're going straight here about the future now uh, in uh, Romans the 8th chapter. Uh, last week we did the first 32 verses and now we are at first, uh, excuse me, 30 verses and now excuse me, the first 18 verses, and now we're going to do the latter uh, 33. And I like the way, uh, I like the way he started this out, you know, and it, it's, it, I just enjoyed it, you know, I'm sorry, I just enjoyed it. It said, for I reckon, for I reckon. In other words, let me tell you, this is going to happen. Uh, can I just say it like they do in the South? Honey child, this is how it's going to be. That's what he's saying now. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, in other words, it's going to be suffering. Once, we, once you get baptized, once you get saved, once you speak in tongues, once you start living, it is going to be some suffering. And let me say, like they say, honey child, it's going to be some suffering in this present world. Yes, we're just going to look at this and it's going to be some, it's going to be some suffering at this present time. If you're not, and we probably say it again in this lesson, if you're not in a trial, you, you're coming out of one. And if you're coming out of it, you're getting ready to go into another one. So it is going to be some suffering. And we hear a lot of people on uh, social me media talking about we we tired of suffering down here, waiting on the by and by and all of this here. You know, I, this was written for them, those people there. If there are any of them around, have them to tune in to us right now. Because at this present time, we are going to have some suf suffering, but we are also looking for the by and by. We know why this suffering is going is going to happen. Let's see, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed unto us. And and I didn't I like the way how Paul told uh, the three facets because you didn't know what they was believing at that time. He said that this would be revealed to us. It, it's going to be revealed f it, no. in other words my suffering what I'm going through is not going to be Revealed to you, it's going to be revealed to me. It's revealed in us that we know why we are going through this suffering. And if we suffering, we know that it's going to be a better. It's going to be better. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get into all of that. I'm I'm kind of getting ahead of it, but but this one right here, this suffering, it's for me. It's what's gonna make me. What's going to make you? Because what I go through in another way is going to mold me in a certain way. And what you go through in another way is going to mold you in a certain way. And God knows what he is doing. And you'll see that later on in this, in this uh, Sunday school lesson too. It said this is worth it compa compared to what the glory is going to be within us. In other words, when we come out that trial, when we made it through, the glory that we can make it, that God kept us and God kept us through, that is how... The, the, how God reveals itself to us. You know, you've seen that um, uh, plaque that they had that uh, uh, God, you, I looked at the beginning of this race, I saw, you, uh, I saw two sets of footprint, but when I got to uh, my hard trials and all of that, I didn't see but one set of uh, footprints. In other words, what we are going through now God is with us, and he's the one going to carry us through that, and that's why this glory is going to be revealed in us. It's going to be revealed in us. And say, for this earnest expectation, the creative, the creation waited for the manifestation of the Son of God. Not just in us, this whole universe, this everything, every creature, is waiting on this here. 
uh, you say, uh, I, they, you're asking the how do you know, because let's look at the scripture. Number one, the scriptures say that the, cre the creature waited for the manifest manifestation of the sons of God. It is waiting, it's, it's waiting on that, of all of the suffering and everything that we was going through, it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the son of God, but the sons of God. We are the sons of God now because we have his spirit. And on, down in this list is going to reveal how we are the sons of God. But it is, but all of creation, they waited on us. Without us, a lot of things in creation cannot make it. The pruning of the trees is taking us. <clears throat> Training of animals is waiting on us. The harvesting of the honeybees, getting the honey from the honeycomb is waiting on us. Don't it would be wasted. But because of, of what happened, it's waiting on us. I, I'm hoping I'm revealing that thought over to us, uh, to you what I'm talking about. But it's waiting on us, waiting on the sons of God, waiting on the humans to get it ready, to get together, to come uh, harvest the ground, till the ground, to uh, prune the trees, waiting on us to tame the animal. It's waiting on us. And, and, and we're still talking about the future to come, but we're talking about the expectation too. It says, for the creature, for the creature was made subject to, van, to vanity, not willingly, but by the season of him whom has subject whom has subject the same hope. In other words, the this here was not put up on them because they wanted it. It wasn't willing. Because of what man did, the cre every creature was, uh, was subject to this vanity because of what man did. And they are waiting and for the same hope we are. No, not in the same hope that they are waiting to be carried to glory uh, and all of that kind of stuff. But they're waiting on us. They got a hope that man going to come and prune the trees. Man going to come and do this here. And, and Paul is letting, is letting all of these uh, three different groups of people that are there know about this. And the creation is waiting on us. And, that, and, and you'll see later on when he's going to tell them to get it together. But they, they're not... Only is this subject for you, it, it, everybody is waiting on us. And when man get it together, uh, when, the, when we get it together, the sons of, the sons of God get it together uh, on this earth, that hide all is going to work. And we are subject, and we are, we are su subjected or subject uh, the same in hope. And we talked about hope um, uh, probably last Sunday, probably was last Sunday during Sunday school lesson, we was talking about that. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage. Uh-uh. The creature is waiting on us. They're going to be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. In other words, when we the stuff, how we work in this creation, what we are doing, they are being delivered also for the glory of God. Let me get a little simple with you. When we see, when we cut the flowers down and they bloom, bloom back in a glorious way and they look good, that's for the glory of God. This creation is, this, this creation right here is waiting on man to get it together so it can be in the, gro the grooming of all of that. It's, it's for that. Verse uh, 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and travaileth in pain together unto now. In other words, the creation is waiting, travailing. Let's, old school, they talked about the travailing of a woman, about her getting uh, ready to have the baby, that she's going through labor, she's going through pain. Of course, I never went through none of that. I only seen uh, two of my kids being birthed, uh, being birthed, but I see how they go through the travailing of it. But after travailing, uh, after going through all of that in pain, to get until now when that child get there, I know I'm getting a little off track, but it, it's something about when a child is born, knowing that another human being has come into the world, that it does something to you. 
you know, that's the experience uh, uh, from a man's point of view. It might not be every man from this man's point of view. It was just about through the pain and everything. But the idea that another human being had entered into the room, not through the door, not through that, but all of a sudden through creation and see the miracle of it. But it take pain in this stuff to go through it. And that's what this, this uh, present world is going through. It's crying out for that. It's crying out for us to till the ground. It's crying out for us to feed the livestock. In other words, uh, when I was growing up, the preacher say, when the lamb and the uh, lion going to lay down together, when the bear will cease to roam and won't be with that, that they'll be able to walk side by side. In other words, this creation is looking for that. The deer won't have to worry about the bear jumping on them. I'm, I'm getting a little uh, elementary with it, but you know, but that's uh, that's why I, this creation is groaning, is groaning. And and the ones here in our audience, if you have a question, just raise your hand, and we will uh, recognize you. Excuse me, in the class. It's uh, we still at uh, verse uh, 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. And when they mean it, unto now, Paul is getting ready to get spiritual, and we get probably getting ready to change subjects too. He said, unto now. In other words, it was hard for the Gentiles to be saved. They couldn't be saved. And they groaned. They were looking out for something. Because we look all over the world, they were building gods to everything. They was looking for a god. They was travailing. Man's soul needs someone. They need, they're looking for that inner being or that thing that where they came from. We are looking for that. We are looking for that. So it's groaning, and now Paul is saying, this is it. Until now, I'm telling you about it. The letter might be coming a day later. It might be coming a year later, but it's getting there, and he said, this is what I'm telling you about until now. And now he's getting ready to go into uh, some of the nouns now. Okay, verse 23, if you got your Bible, Romans, the 8th chapter, we have verse 23 now. It says, for not only they, but all ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. Not We ain't talking about the fruits of the Spirit now. Even, even we ourselves grown within ourselves having the adoption the adoption to quit the redemption of the body. Have the first fruit of the spirit, the first fruit, the fruit, not talking about the fruits of the spirit. We talk, right now we're talking about first fruit. Everyone, we, that was talking about high days. We don't have time to go into the high day. The Pentecost it was one of the first fruit days. In other words, now we are giving our best. And not only they, but ourselves also, let's change that first fruit into best, which have the best of ourselves. And we groan within ourselves. We're giving them our best. But to give them our best, we have to groan. What is our best? Our best is not attacking people in the street. Our best is not uh, robbing and stealing and uh, all types of illicit sins and stuff going on. That's not our best. And our first fruits, our first fruits is going to be good. It's going to be good. It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be a good thing. It's going to be good. And to get good out of it, we saw how our bodies are warring with each other. It's grown. It's a groaning going on. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the commercial. You've seen a, a commercial. It was a, a person in a with a halo over his head over it, on one side and on the other side it had a devil and that's and, and I'm not te and I'm not teaching last week lesson but that's what we are groaning about to do right and to do wrong we got the holy ghost the holy ghost is uh, telling us to do right and our body is telling us to do wrong you know it, it, it it's right there it's right there on us and we are having that in us and we're groaning 
we, we, uh, our bodies don't know, we don't know what to do about it. It's, it's something that is going on. Rem remember, and I think I said it last week, that this body is not going to spend one day in heaven. It's going back to the ground. To be honest, it really ain't going, to, if you want to look at it, it's not going to hell either. It's just going to be there. It's going to cease to exist. This body is not going to, it ain't nothing good for it, and it's nor, and that's body know it. You are in your body. And that's where the groaning and where the uh, fighting and all of the stuff is going on in because of all of that. It's no good thing. And also, I don't want to jump over uh, some of this here. It says in verse uh, 23, it says, We know this are the first fruit of ourselves, groaning within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. The church waiting for the adoption. Now we are the sons of God. But we're waiting on the adoption. And if that's a little bit of the eschatology, what I'm telling you about, the study of the uh, future times, but it's not, we, uh, it's waiting on the adoption. We are not the original. It's three groups up in there. In other words, they're not your brother that was had the uh, teaching of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they have the uh, adoption that they are going to be with them, the adoption that we are going to be the sons of God waiting for the adoption. We are sons, but we are waiting on the adoption. And then it goes on to talk about and the redemption of the body. Redemption. You, I, I didn't run it. I didn't run the uh, word search on this here. But I believe the word redemption, this is one of the first times that it's showing up in the Bible. Redemption. Because the church is the only thing that can be redeemed. The, uh, and the church is made up of baptized believers. It's not made up as the Jewish per se, who was the only one that could be saved at one time. But they are waiting on the uh, redemption. And, and you know how I know about that. And if you have any questions, okay, in the book of Revelation, when the one that was robes in white, when anywhere in the book of uh, Revelation, when you see the robes in white, they are talking about the church. When they came in, and the angels ask, who are these and who are these people that are coming? And the angels is up there singing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all of this. They up there singing. But when the ones that are robed in white, they comes in, all of a sudden, the choir stopped. And they look over there at them, want to know who are these robed in white? But no matter what was going on, we was coming in a number. Okay, I'm getting a little head. They was coming in with a number so big that the angels had to move over. And then the church starts saying, we are redeemed. We're the only one that will be redeemed. We're the only one, the one that comes through the church. We are the redeemed. They stop saying, holy, 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 and they start saying, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's the only time they are not saying, holy, 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 in uh, in heaven. And that's what Paul was talking about, about the redemption of the body, when the catching away, when we are gone and we have been redeemed and we have made it there. In other words, we're all going to get there together. When we, when we get to heaven, and, uh, and I'm waiting on question, when we get to heaven, it ain't going to be just all uh, a black heaven. It ain't going to be all just uh, Indians. It ain't going to be all just Jewish. We're going to be all there together. When you had a choir before, can I say it in our terms so we can understand? We had a choir together that was all angels, all angelic beings, made to serve God. If they didn't serve him, he killed them, put them down to the earth, just like that, just simple. They had to do it. But to redeem are the ones that want to do it. What wasn't forced to do it, we we'll go in this lesson and talk about being forced, but they, were, they wasn't forced to serve God. It was a pleasure. And, and, and I'm taking this personal now. I dare 
those people on social media to tell me that uh, you sitting here and you waiting on something that might not happen in the by and by. You're, this what is revealed in me. Uh, when you got it in you, you ain't worried about this present state. And they can say what they want to say about uh, we ain't we uh, you worrying about the by and by and the hereafter and all of that. But in this present time, we are sin. We are in this world of sin and we are going through struggles, but we look forward to a future. We look forward to a future. And I take notice of saying this here. Some of the people out there should be glad we are looking for the future. Because if we didn't have that hope and didn't have no future, ain't no telling what we would be or what we would do. And that within this body, what is revealed into us, we know, you know that it's going to be a better place. You know it's somewhere else that we are looking for in a better place. Yes, it's in the by and by, and we can have it right here in the present also. It's a uh, waiting for the adoption uh, to wit. Uh, that's a, we don't have time to go into that talking about the wit, but we're talking about the redemption of the body. We went in a little about that when we get to heaven, how we're going to sing that we are being redeemed. Uh, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. Uh-uh. Saved by hope. I'm just pulling it up so I can see it. We are saved by hope, but hope that is seen, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? We're saved by hope. Hope, Peter, the apostle of hope. Without hope, what we this was the first lesson when it began on Easter Sunday. Hope what? That's right. If Jesus hadn't raised from the dead, we wouldn't have that hope. So we're saved by that hope. Just let's let's look at it. If Jesus hadn't died, we talked about this two Sundays ago during Easter, or was it three Sundays? If Jesus hadn't died and rose again, what kind of hope would we have? We wouldn't have no hope. And that's why I say we are, um, where, verse 24, we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Okay, if I know, for example, hope is hope that is seen is not hope that is a uh, hope that is seen is not hope. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to keep it right here. If I know that 400 feet from here is a stop sign, and I know 90 percent of the time, 99 percent of the time that people are going to stop at the stop sign. They're going to stop at the stop sign. It's always that 1%. But that's not a hope. Did I lose anyone? But that's not hope because we can see that. We know that it's going to happen. But when you're driving down uh, 21 early in the morning and the lights are out and the lights are not blinking and you come to an intercession, now, this is hope. Do I stop you? I'm seeing cars going 20, uh, what, 50 miles each way, and I'm trying to get across. Now, when you're hoping this is not going to, they're not going to stop. I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to keep it like this here. We'll look at the spiritual part of it again. But when we hoping a car might stop, you easing out there, getting your head, your front of your car, and you hoping that they stop and let you by, that's a whole different thing. Well, we were on the borderline of faith with that, but we want to just stick with it with hope. But you hoping that those cars stop. So you hope. And that's what Paul is trying to tell them. You're saved by hope. You know Jesus rose from the dead. You know you're going to get up like that. We are saved by that because he got up. That's the hope that we have. That's, as you know, some people say the hope of glory, and now a lot of people are changing. It used to be the temple of praise. Now they call themselves the temple of hope. 
that's what all of this is coming about. Because if Jesus died from the grave, we hope that we are being, we hope we are going to be resurrected like him. And that's what Christianity through is about that. It is a hope that we are going to be saved. And it's something that we haven't seen because we ain't made it yet. How can we continue in seeing that grace may abound? That's to, that was about a Sunday ago. This is the hope that we have. You see how the lessons are tying in together now? We hope we make it. We hope. We hope. You know, every day when we lay down and go to sleep, we are hoping. We, hope. we ain't made it yet. We ain't got to the by and by. But we getting there by and by. But we hope that we hope that we'll make it. Verse 24, let's, we're going to move on for that. It's hope that is not seen. For, for what a man sees, why does he hope for? We don't see it. We, 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 we can't see it. And we're hoping for it. But every now and then, you know, if you don't mind me going for a little station break right now, but every now and then we get the little feeling that God let give us the touch that we know that it's something better coming. Because if it wasn't so good, if, if he ain't gave me nothing this good before, I know it's something coming over. I know that God is real. You know, every y'all y'all saints, y'all Christians know what I'm talking about. We're talking about the hope in our natural, but God started encouraging us with this little piece of Holy Ghost that is in us right now. That he let us know and he wake us up. You know, sometime when that, because we forget to take that pill and now that arthritis knee, knee is going good, I'm getting a little silly now. But it's saying, but we hope. That's the hope what I'm talking about. That we know that, we know that there's a God. We know he died. We know that he rose again. Because the empty tombs let us know that, that, uh, that he rose again. I don't know why I had to stay there for a minute. I, I didn't do a whole lot of studying about that because we had studied before. But if, we, but, but if we hope for that what is not seen, then do we have, do it with patience, wait for it. That's the problem what we have to have. That's where the Holy Ghost come in at. We have to do it with patience. In other words, we hoping that, uh, we hoping that we are raised by Jesus. We, we are raised with Jesus when he come up again. We are hoping for that, but we got to do it in patience. Because what was the old saints used to say? He may not come when you want it, but he always right on time. That's the patience, what we have to worry about. For over 40 years, we've been singing that song. And some of them were singing it 10 years before I got it. That uh, they may not come in the morning. But we have to hope for that. That's what we are hoping. We are hoping for that. We are hoping that in the hope, we, in, in hope, I wish I could walk with this here. But in hope, we are waiting for the glorious end. And we know what the glorious end is going to be because this book has told us about what's going to happen in the end. And, and I'm waiting on that. And, it, and if you're waiting on that, you got to do it with patience. And that's why this trouble, what you are having, uh, in, your prayer, in the first verse where it, where it tells us, we're going to have all these pains. We're going to have all these different things uh, going on. This hope that we have in us and the pain that we are going through, that hope make, let, make it a little better and may, let us go on through with it. That's what it is. That's what the hope, the hope uh, section is talking about. Verse, 20, um, verse 26, likewise, the spirit also help it all infirmity. Oh, just what I just got through saying. I'm getting a little ahead of the lesson. Uh, the spirit help with our infirmities. In other words, when we're going through our trials, when we're going through our tribulation, the spirit let us know that it, it's not going to be like this in all ways. You know, it's a better, a better. When we first started on this, uh, ser this series of freedom, uh, they gave us a little insight on what was going on 200 years back during slavery when they was waiting on freedom. I, even some of the slaves thought death, freedom was in death. Freedom was in, they, they literally, I, I wasn't back there, but the stories were being told, they knew they was free when they died. 
they knew they could take their rest right then. And that's what this here is kind of talking about in our infirmities. We know it's a better place, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad it gets, how bad it seems it is. In, in our infirmities, this hope that I have, I know it's going to be better. Anyone got any questions so far? For we know not what we should, okay, uh, we're talking about our infirmities, and now getting ready, uh, I should have gave the out, broke down the outline for some of the ones what was here from the beginning. Uh, this part is talking about um, what we had verse, uh, uh, I believe we're at verse 26. Like, likewise, we'll have hope in our infirmities, for we hope for what we pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with growing which cannot be utterance. The old teaching on that, it haven't changed. It haven't changed. In other words, when we're going through our infirmities, our infirmities are going through such a hard time, sometimes we don't know how to pray. We say we have all prayed out. I cried my last tear yesterday. It's all out. Sometimes we, and sometimes we just have to stay right there. Just stay right there, no matter what, just let whatever come out, comes out. Whatever comes up, it comes up. And some folks say, and, and I believe it, we're going, I have seen it uh, in a lot of service, people are praying, and all of a sudden they go to praying in tongues. We don't know, at that time, God is praying and letting us know that we don't know what to pray for, but I know what to pray for, and I want to be praised. And he used someone, and they beginning to pray in tongues. And it don't seem like it's out of order. Sometimes we have an interpreter and sometimes we don't. But we look at the fruits when every time that happens and God takes it over and we uh, pray and the spirit takes over and our prayer comes through, we look for something better to happen or we look for some kind of works to start going on in the church. Because we don't all the time know what to pray for. And the spirit will pray for the, the spirit make intercession for us words that we cannot understand you know we don't know how to say it but uh we are but it make it and we're groaning sometimes doing it you see some they up there they praying in tongues and uh excuse if you don't mind me saying it like that they're praying we don't know what they said but you can feel the blessings coming from it and i look at it like this sometimes sometimes it's praying for something i don't want to raise my hand for to tell somebody what it's all about. And that's, that, that's the, in this hope, God gonna fix it all that we, it all is going to come together. You'll see it at the end, uh, time is getting by, but we'll, we'll see it at the end that uh, how everything's going to come together for them that love the Lord. Okay, it's an intercession that makes groans to us which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. For he that searches the heart knows, for he that searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay, he that searches the heart, what is in the mind of the spirit? You you might notice when a evangelist come in sometime, or someone is a guest speaker. I've heard uh, one of, uh, it's a, um, Elder Scotty, when he comes in, he said all the time when he prayed, he always said, give me the mind of this leader. I pray that I have the spirit of this leader on me. Before he started delivering us, uh, delivering the word to us. In other words, the spirit knows, and sometimes we have to know and get the heart of certain things. And in the letter to Paul, and Paul sending him this letter, in reading this letter, he's hoping that they get it all together. We're still dealing with the thing of hope. He said, uh, verse 28, for we know the things all work together. Uh, did I get? Um, verse 27, for he, search, for he that searches the heart knows that the minds of the spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In other words, 
he know he uh, uh, God the Spirit and getting connection, getting connected with uh with us knows what's going on as uh, as we start speaking in in tongues as we pray as we start doing with each other or uh, we pray before we get up to get the uh, get the um get the mind what the other person is uh is talking about in a session according to the will of God 28 for we know that all things work together for again for the good of them that love God for them who are called okay verse uh, 28 we always uh, bring this scripture up it say that we all know th we we know that all things work together for the them that work together for the good of them that loves the Lord we know how to use that part of the scripture in other words I ain't got to worry about that it all worked together we come here in the wash it all gonna come out together it all gonna work good together it's all you get your you go this you go this and I do this here, and it's all gonna work out chaos it's all gonna work together but look at it the last part of they never uh, bring that last part up, out to them who are called according to his purpose it's a purpose all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord according to his purpose we're talking about hope and the purpose of God now it's three different subjects in this passage what we was talking about not talking about the, the purpose according to his purpose it works together you might it, like even in putting uh, on this uh, putting on this uh, broadcast now talking about uh, this Sunday school class it took some to come in to set this up it took some to get ready to put it out it took some to get the lesson together and a person to organize it and then when you see this one person just standing up here talking this person didn't do all of this here everything works together for them that love the Lord according to his purpose in other words, we do, when we all do it together, it comes together. But uh, uh, when we take the scripture out of context right here and say it's going to work together, oh, I'm going to get up there and we're going to do it and it's just going to work together for the good of God. Now, all things don't work for the purpose and we got to according to his will. You know, we all have to get together on that. Verse uh, 29 For whom he did foreknow, he uh, he did he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first born, firstborn among many brothers. Who he foreknew, in other words, before we was born, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. But before. For whom he foreknew, he also predestinated. Pre predestinated. A lot of people takes that out of a context. They say, if I've been predestined to be saved, uh, in other words, I'm going to be saved no matter what. Um, at the turn of the century, it was a lot of people talking about predestination or predestinated. But this one right here, in other words, God knew that some of us was going to be right here. But we still, he still gave us that will. We were predestined to be here. Or we've been predestined to be in the order of God or be somewhere. But it still comes to our will. What we's going to do, what's going to happen. Say, for whom, for whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to conform to the image of his son. There, go back from the beginning when God, uh, this, we're in the Hebrew now, uh, excuse me, in the uh, Greek, and when we was talking about the image of God over in the Old Testament, talk, talking about his likeness, uh, what he's doing, his coming out, God is holy, that is the image of God, God is holy, we're not looking for no physical image, we're talking about what he is and what he's going through when we look at it in the Hebrew. But over here, the image, the image of God uh, the image of his son who is God is what did uh, he come here to do so we are predestined to come here and do something we was made to praise him 
We are made to tell someone about the goodness of God. We are made to just uh, go out and serve him. That is talking about the image of his son that he might be, that we might be the first firstborn among the brethren. We talked about the firstborn on the holidays, getting the best, that we might be the best among the brethren. Do anyone have any questions? Am I going too far? Anyone want to bring me back in? Because sometimes I go out thinking that you all are with me sometimes. Any question? We're talking about hope for the future, freedom for the future. No question. Verse of... Okay, uh, I'll be asking questions in a minute. Okay, in verse uh, 30, moreover, whom he has predestinated, who he have, uh, he, who he had pre he, for whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And I'm sure... Some of us have been in church a whole lot. We heard about that. They say, I've been called out by God. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. One day I'm going to be glorified. I'm going to be justified, saved and sanctified. And I know I'm justified. And one day I'm going to be glorified. Uh, that's what they are talking about right now. But the beginning before we get there, they're talking about the, predestin the pre predestinated that you are here. God predestinated that you was going to be here at this certain time. Let's don't, I, and a lot of people use that to say if it already been predestinated, God had predestinated who's going to be saved, who is not going to be saved. He predest, he pre, he's predicting now, he predestined that you was going to be here to hear the word right now. He never gave you, never went against your free will. Never went against your free will. No words, you're going to be here. You're going to hear the word. When you come here, uh, uh, just last Sunday, when we was talking, when the uh, brother wanted to get baptized, he wanted to make an arrangement to get baptized. Now, you're here now. That was the future right there. It's time for you to get it now. When someone is here, when you invite that friend, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to the beginning now, when you invite that friend, when you invite, invite that person here to get saved, don't come here not expecting that to happen. And I, we are praying for it all the time. When you invite that person, when those when these people come in that we are inviting, we are coming in expecting that someone is going to get saved. They have been predestinated for to be here. Let's keep it in order. They'll be, they are predestinated to be here, and now it's up to us to get in our place to get it. Uh, stay in our place. Don't get out of our place. Let the pastor do the preaching. Don't preach to them from the pew sometimes. Let them get it. So they've been predestinated. And who he predestinated, uh, he have called. when He have called you for such a time as this. And then that, we go back into the justification. We talked about justification, about faith before on a, a, a subject before. Whom he justified, now he's going to glorify you. And sometimes we can get the glory right here. It's not always uh, the glory uh, in the future per se. We're talking about we can get the glory in everything right here. It's glory when every, if the saints in heaven shouts over one saint being saved, down here, we can do the same thing. We can get the glory. Now, every time, glory is not in a shout, but it's the happy feeling of what's going to be because we know what happened. That's what the glory of God is talking about. Uh, verse uh, 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We know about the predestination of God, gonna, if all things work together, and the hope that we have. If God be for us, who can be against us? And I'm going through fast so we can get to the other part. I believe I told the story about uh, doing a Nazi Germany when these uh, Jews was in this camp, and they decided to put God on trial. The Jews, they tried to they put God on trial because they couldn't understand why they was going through that. 
and they got their witness against God, and they had some uh, for them. But when they came down to the verdict, the verdict was that he was on their side. And that's what this hope, this is what all of this uh, infirmity is talking about. God is on our side. And that's what makes everything so great that we can go through uh, this here right now. And that's the future we're talking about. Yes, we're talking about the by and by, but right now because of what we're going through, we know that God is on our side and that would let us go through what we are going through right now. Verse 32, and then we'll look at some of the questions. It says, uh, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, how shall he say with, with them so freely, give us all these things? In other words, God gave his own son. You, it's going to cost us a price, and our price is our life that we serve God. He wants us to serve him all the days of our life after we get to know him. He, his son gave up his life for us, and now God, in turn, wants us to give his life for them. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time for Sunday school that you have given these people to, to us to teach. God, we thank you for uh, uh, touching their ears right now that we have said something that would help them go a little further that will prick their minds and they will want to be saved and they will want to live for you. Oh God, we thank you for this lesson and we ask all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.